Good morning. Welcome to Johnson Space Center. My name is Mark Geyer. I'm the NASA Program Manager for Orion. Uh, thank you for coming today. It's a great day uh, here in Houston. Um, you know, when I was a kid, uh, all, along with thousands of other kids, I watched uh, men walk on the moon, and those flights and all the flights before really motivated me to be a student, to work hard on math and science. What we're going to talk about today, I think, is um, doing even more than that, actually bringing these uh, questions and excitement into the classroom directly. So it's a great example, I think, of what NASA is trying to do uh, and bringing these exciting things into the students' classrooms. Um, uh, as I said, I'm the manager of the Orion program. Behind me is a mock-up of the Orion. We use this mock-up to test human factors, like can the crew reach things? Can they get into their suits in an emergency? Can we get to the stove equipment we need? It's very important work we do right here at the Johnson Space Center. Uh, at the Kennedy Space Center, we're putting together the flight test article that we're going to fly in space uh, in 18 short months. Uh, we'll be taking that article 3,000 miles into space, entering in about 80% of the lunar entry velocity and also going through the Van Allen belts, and it'll experience some pretty high radiation. Um, Right now, the heat shield uh, structure is being sent to Boston, and we'll actually put the ablative material on that'll actually allow us to survive that entry, and then it'll go to the Cape. All our computers and communication system and power systems are being tested in Denver with the flight software. Uh, so there's a, a whole bunch going on to make this flight test happen. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, Orion is going to see high radiation during its flight. It's one of the things, this radiation is one of the things that we have to understand and manage better as we send people into deep space and to Mars. And so that's why this experiment that we're going to talk about is so important. Um, we have a very august group today uh, that you're going to meet uh, and is going to speak to you today. I think it gives really a, a sense for how important uh, education is to NASA and to Lockheed and to the rest of the nation. So I have the honor now to introduce uh, Charlie Bolden, the administrator of NASA. Mark, thanks very much. Um, it's good for me to be back, back actually back home. Um, it's always good to come to JSC. I want to welcome everybody who's here at the Johnson Space Center. Um, I think everybody knows for more than 50 years now, JSC has played a vital role in America's human spaceflight program, both our storied home of mission control and the place where every astronaut trains uh, to earn their wings. In fact, we were back in the green room and we interrupted a little training going, a little fire training going on for one of the future space station astronauts. Uh, if not all of us, most of us remember those immortal words associated with the 1970 Apollo 13 mission, Houston, we have a problem. Today we're here to announce an effort in partnership with Lockheed Martin and the, and the young people of America that will allow us to take about a year from now to proclaim, Houston, we have a solution. In a moment, you'll hear details of the NASA Lockheed Martin Exploration Design Challenge that will play a vital role in the launch of Orion, America's next generation spacecraft set for its maiden voyage next year. I want to take a few moments to talk a little bit about the genesis and purpose of Orion. Three years ago, my boss, President Obama, set a goal of sending humans farther into space than we've ever been, to an asteroid in 2025 and to Mars in the 2030s, and I'm looking at all the students out here, okay? Think about it, 2030s, that's you, that's not me. So uh, that's what the president's told us he wants us to do, and we're trying to get there. But we've got some problems that Mark already alluded to. After prolonged deliberations, Congress and the president agreed that the best way to do that was for NASA to turn over the delivery of cargo and crew to the International Space Station and other low Earth orbit destinations to private companies so that we could concentrate on building America's next generation space exploration system. The Orion spacecraft, the model of which is behind me, and the space launch system. By investing in American companies and American ingenuity, we're spurring free market competition to give taxpayers more bang for the buck while enabling NASA to do what we do best, reach deeper into our solar system. We're, always, we're also ending the outsourcing of American space jobs and bringing them right back here to Houston and other states and cities all across this country. This strategy is producing tangible results. On March 1st, SpaceX launched the second of 12 scheduled cargo missions to the, US, to the ISS. 
The company's Dragon capsule executed a successful berthing to the ISS two days later and has now delivered 1,200 pounds of supplies, fresh foods, and science experiments. As the only vehicle capable of returning large amounts of cargo and experiments back to Earth, Dragon will be fully loaded when it splashes down in the Pacific off the California coast on March 25th. This capability is key to enabling NASA to attain our goal of sending humans to an asteroid and ultimately to Mars. These ambitious missions will depend on engagement from every sector of our society, from scientists and astronauts at, Na at our NASA centers to our corporate partners like Lockheed Martin and America's K-12 students. When Orion takes its first flight in 2014, that's next year, okay? This is 2013. 2014, next year, it will travel farther into space than any spacecraft developed for human spaceflight has flown in the 40 years since our astronauts returned from the moon. This will require new technologies, including new ways to keep our astronauts safe from deep space radiation. That is the purpose of this challenge, and we're excited that American students will be helping us to solve that problem. This project also supports NASA's commitment to inspiring more young people to study and pursue careers in science, technology, engineering, and mathematics, the STEM disciplines. As you all know, STEM-educated workers are the key to America's technological leadership and economic growth in the 21st century. NASA and the entire aerospace industry in particular will need a steady pipeline of scientists, engineers, and technicians so we can continue to push the boundaries of exploration and do our part to reinvigorate America's manufacturing, scientific, and high-tech industries. The Orion Exploration Design Challenge will give more young people a chance to develop those skills. I want to thank Lockheed and our education team at NASA, led by former astronaut, my hero, Leland Melvin, and the young, hey, come on, come on. Leland's a unique individual. I think most of you know that, and I brag about him all the time. There is no other human being on the surface of the Earth who's ever played NFL football and also been to space. So that's my man. Uh, Leland and the young people of America are really going to help us do this. And I thank all of you for your commitment and, involving in, and involvement in America's space program. It's now my honor uh, to have this opportunity to bring to the podium our great partner in this endeavor, the new president and CEO of Lockheed Martin, Marilyn Hewson. Marilyn. Administrator Bolden, thank you very much for that kind introduction. Well, my thanks also to Associate Administrator Melvin and to Mr. Geyer of the Orion Program Office for this wonderful opportunity. And to Ms. Pinchback, thank you for your dedicated service to our schools and to our students. We at Lockheed Martin are grateful for the opportunity to once again support science, technology, engineering, and math education. Space exploration has inspired and fascinated young people for generations and the Exploration Design Challenge is a unique way to capture and engage the imaginations of tomorrow's engineers and scientists. Innovation is the engine of American progress, and STEM education is the fuel that fires that engine. Yet we're facing a real challenge. As a generation of scientists and engineers retire, we aren't seeing enough young people stepping into these important technology careers. We need bright, creative leaders for these feats, fields, and we need them to ensure that the innovation engine continues to drive our country's leadership, national security, and economic strength. At Lockheed Martin, we embrace the responsibility to champion and support STEM education. And that's why we're so proud to partner with educators, government agencies like NASA, and our communities on STEM initiatives that engage and inspire students. Many of our corporation's 60,000 engineers, scientists, and IT professionals support STEM education through school outreach, volunteerism, and charitable giving. Our volunteers work side by side in the classroom with students and teachers, mentoring and coaching students. Through our work, we know 
that what gets students excited about careers in technology is the chance to make a difference, to achieve things no one else has ever achieved, and to make a difference that is meaningful and lasting. And frankly, it's the same thing that motivates and inspires all of us in our jobs. This exploration design challenge captures the opportunity perfectly. For the students here with us today and those who are on NASA TV watching, you're about to embark on an amazing journey. The skills you'll learn from this challenge, problem solving, critical thinking, systems engineering, are the very same skills that our engineers apply to our most challenging problems every day. You're taking on a mission that is hugely important, keeping our astronauts safe during a journey through deep space. And all of you who participate will be part of something that's never been done before, the first test flight of Orion. NASA's vision and leadership are the driving force behind both this opportunity and the missions and memories that have inspired generations. For more than five decades, the men and women of Lockheed Martin have proudly worked side by side with NASA and many of the, on many of those missions, landing on the moon, exploring Mars, capturing pieces of comets and our sun, and traveling to outer reaches of the universe. It's fitting that we're here today in front of Orion, which will take humankind on its next great journey. Our moon is 1,000 times more distant from Earth than the International Space Station. And through Orion, our goal is to explore millions of miles beyond. Every journey starts with a single step. And the Orion's Exploration Flight Test 1 is a significant first step toward deep space human exploration. This mission will lay the foundation for future Orion flights and will take astronauts past the moon and on to asteroids and Mars. And those future missions will be led by a whole new generation of scientists, engineers, and explorers. Students like the bright, innovative young men and women joining us today. We know nothing teaches like real hands-on experience. And that's what draws Lockheed Martin to support programs like the Exploration Design Challenge. We recognize the amazing increase in learning that comes with critical thinking and real-world problem solving. And in this case, real out-of-this-world problem solving. Administrator Bolden, once again, thank you for this opportunity to partner with NASA and to help reach and inspire millions of students as we usher in a new generation of scientists, engineers, and explorers. It's now my pleasure to introduce Leland Melvin, NASA's Associate Administrator for Education and two-time space shuttle astronaut. In his current role, Leland is responsible for the development and implementation of NASA's education programs. Using the excitement of the agency's exploration missions and scientific discoveries, he and his team are strengthening student involvement in STEM and helping build our next generation of explorers. Please join me in welcoming Leland Melvin, who will share some of the details of the Exploration Design Challenge. Thank you, Marilyn. And I hate when Charlie does that. <laughs> I'm uh, very excited to be here. And I, I just want to say there's an there's a African proverb that says, it takes a village to raise a child. And when I think about this relationship with NASA and Lockheed Martin and how we're coming together to help inspire that next generation of explorer, I think about my roots growing up in a small town in Lynchburg, Virginia, with educators as parents. And for the students out here in the audience, hands-on experiential activities that Marilyn just talked about are what fuel your curiosity. Now, when I was a kid, my mother gave me an age-inappropriate chemistry set that was not vetted by OSHA. I created the most incredible explosion in my mother's living room, and that fueled my curiosity to become a chemistry major. So the things that we're trying to do with Orion and the Exploration Design Challenge will help you find that curiosity, will help you solve problems to help our astronauts, and maybe even you one day, fly on Orion to Mars. So the work that you're doing today 
in developing, creating radiation shields to help save us, keep us going to Mars, may be the radiation shield that saves your life one day. So a little bit more about the details of the challenge. You can actually go to nasa.gov slash education slash EDC, and students from K through 12 can actually register to be part of this. So students and parents, students and teachers, we want to have teams of students clustered together to work as a team, just like we do in this Building 9, building these models, building these mock-ups, building so forth and so on. So if you're a K through 4 student, our youngest explorers, you'll compete with NASA education activities related to radiation. So you'll learn more about what the basics of radiation are, when you take an x-ray, when you do things, when you walk outside for 365 days on the planet, you get about the dosage of about four to five chest x-rays. So learning about what it means to get radiation in your body and how that affects your body. And so those students will actually be able to do activities and then their names will be submitted to actually fly on EFT-1. Our fifth through eighth grade middle schoolers, we've added a little more of a challenge. So they'll also complete education activities. They'll have a chance to become honorary crew members. But in addition, you'll design and develop a radiation shield prototype. So that's for the middle schoolers. The high schoolers here. You guys are all high schoolers, right? OK. You guys look really wonderful out there, by the way. Um, you guys are going to be our engineers in the making. And you'll have a chance to get even more involved. You'll be forming a team. So mentors, maybe from Lockheed, from NASA, maybe your parents, we working together to form a team. There will be five teams chosen to test their designs in a virtual radiation simulator. All five teams that are chosen will go down to, to Kennedy Space Center for the launch of the FT-1. And there will be a final down select of the winning design that will possibly be flown on EFT-1. Now, we're banking on this design because one of you or one of our astronauts will be flying to Mars. We'll be actually using space-certified radiation sensors sitting behind your radiation shield to see how effective it's working at blocking radiation. So that's kind of the, the big picture of the test. I think about partnerships. I think about community. All the federal agencies are working to ensure that we leverage our unique assets. Orion is a fantastic, unique asset that both NASA and Lockheed Martin are working together to help change the world through this community of learning. Thank you very much. And next, I'm going to invite up Amber Pinchback. She is an HISD principal, educator, and an award-winning educator. So Amber, could you please come up? Good morning. To reach for new heights and reveal the unknown so that what we do and learn will benefit all humankind is NASA's mission, and to some degree the mission of all educators. For if we do not motivate our students to reach for new heights and reveal something new within themselves, how will we benefit all humankind? As a young girl, my fifth grade math and science teachers, Ms. Miller and Ms. Richardson, were able to motivate and challenge me to discover my capabilities in these subjects. They even convinced me to be on the school's math and science team, where I was taught how to improve and sharpen my skills, and my confidence soared because of them. And as my interest in math and science grew, I happened upon a movie titled Space Camp, and I knew I had to go. I just didn't know the opportunity would present itself to me as an adult while teaching eighth grade science here in Houston ISD. This is where my connection to NASA and education begins. I traveled with a group of educators from a variety of Houston schools to Huntsville, Alabama, and we embarked on our space camp adventure. And boy, was I glad I experienced space camp as an adult and not as a child. Not only was it exhilarating to create and shoot rockets, simulate walking on the moon, and take on the role of Capcom during our simulated missions, but I also learned how to navigate many of NASA's resources, including the NASA website, where educators like me can find a plethora of photos, videos, games, and student-centered objective-driven lessons for all ages and content areas. So with my blue jumpsuit, excitement from my experience, and the knowledge to navigate resources, I headed home to Houston to share what I learned with my students and colleagues. A couple of years later, I became an administrator at the same school, and a teacher approached me to apply for an in-flight downlink with astronauts aboard the ISS. 
With the help of NASA's Teaching from Space Department, we were able to host a successful in-flight downlink in our school auditorium, where approximately 20 students had the opportunity to ask questions to astronauts Shannon Walker and Doug Wheelock, while the remaining 1,600 of our students watched live from the classroom TVs on NASA TV. Our downlink was the first step our school took towards implementing STEM objectives, science, technology, engineering, and math. See, my school, Johnston Middle School, is the performing and visual arts middle school of Houston ISD. And our students are renowned for their artistic abilities. But our students are more than artists. They are future engineers, doctors, and computer scientists. And we want our students to know they can be both. With an auditorium full of over 800 people, you could have heard a pin drop when our students were sending their questions to the ISS. Everyone was on the edge of their seats, waiting to hear the astronauts' responses and watching them utilize weightlessness as they spin effortlessly and flipping, waving goodbye. And the excitement didn't stop there. We worked with the astronauts' appearance office and were able to host Dr. Walker at our school. The days that led up to her visit were celebrated with space and STEM lessons in every classroom, many of them retrieved from the NASA website. The building principal even began calling our campus Johnston Space Center. <laughs> Through NASA Explorer Schools and the Digital Learning Network, two colleagues and I were able to fly aboard NASA's Weightless Wonder and conduct science experiments in micro and hypergravity, collect data, and compare it to the data our students collected back at school in 1G. We've also had the opportunity to work with the Student Space Flights Experiments Program, where students are challenged to create experiments to be conducted by astronauts aboard the ISS, collect the data, and bring it back to Earth for comparison to their 1G experiments. The impact this project had on our students was stunning. To offer a middle school student the chance to create an experiment and have it fly in space is unbelievable. There are no other middle school science experiments that compare. This is what makes the Orion Exploration Design Challenge so magnificent. Inviting students to assist NASA in solving the problem of radiation protection takes learning and applying science to a new level. It allows students the chance to wrap their minds around a real problem, like a real scientist, and solve and find real answers. Not only is the problem real, but it is also one that will help humans achieve what we have never before achieved by taking us beyond low Earth orbit and onto an asteroid or Mars. Orion is the future of human spaceflight, and what better way to connect the country to this spacecraft than by enticing educators and the next generation of scientists to become a part of its progress and purpose. It is through this partnership that space exploration will flourish and continue to reveal the unknown so that what we do and learn will benefit all humankind. Thank you. I will now turn the event back over to Mr. Leland Melvin. Okay, so at, at this time, we're gonna have a chance to get questions from the students of this very distinguished panel here. So I would like to bring up the first student to ask your question to the panel. Hi, my name is Kyle. What do you feel is the greatest benefit of human spaceflight? You want to hit that, sir? I can try. I, you know, I think there are a number of benefits, but since you said the greatest, um, I think it's an aspirational benefit, and that is one that helps people believe that there is much higher things to attain than what we normally see in our lives every day. Um, you know, I will be very disappointed. I tell people, I came here in 1980 um, as a brand new astronaut candidate. And uh, when I came, I thought I would fly on the shuttle once and, uh, and then start training for a mission back to the moon and then eventually on to Mars. And unfortunately for me and my class, we had something happen in 1986, which was loss of Challenger. And, uh, and the world, all of a sudden turned away from that kind of experience. And it has taken us quite a while to recover. So I would like to help all of you get that dream again, because I know we can do it. But it's something that the nation has to really believe in. Uh, otherwise, it won't happen. So uh, just having people, having you able to talk to an astronaut on the International Space Station, to see that people who are just like you, started just like you, uh, have reached that level of, of, of achievement, I think is, is really important. Thank you, Charlie. Next question. 
I, th I think the next question is for Charlie also. <laughs> Want to go ahead and ask your question? Hi, my, uh, my name is Robert Kennedy. My question is specifically to uh, Mark Geyer. Hey. Um, <laughs> what role specifically has innovation played in the developing Orion? Oh, great question. Yeah, so you know, really we have to innovate in order to make this mission happen. Uh, some of it looks similar to Apollo, but the, the guts of Orion are really state of the art. So a good example would be the uh, network interface, time trigger gigabit ethernet, allows us to communicate with the computers extremely fast, but also very safe and reliable, which is very important when you got human, uh, humans on board. Um, we do a lot of things innovating relative to saving money as well. Uh, a lot of this mock-up behind you, the stuff inside, is actually designed and built by middle school, high school, college students because they can provide things that help make this work, uh, also tie education back into the classroom, but also save us money. So it's things like that. It's all sorts of technological and affordability things we need to do to innovate to make this work. What advice would you give for um, young women trying to pursue careers in um, aerospace? I guess my best advice would be to go for it. I mean, I've been in the aerospace industry for 30 years, started as an industrial engineer so many years ago, and this is an industry where, as you can see, you can be involved in cutting edge technology and you can work with some of the smartest engineers and scientists in the world. So it's a great place to spend your career. I would just suggest that, you know, there's three areas that you should focus on so that you can be successful. What we find is, those who focus on doing their best, work hard and meet their commitments are the ones that are most successful because we, we want folks that are dedicated and that are working hard and, and delivering results. The second thing that's really important in this industry and in working with NASA and other government agencies is that you have to be a team player. Everything we do is around teams. It's not individuals, it's teams that make things happen. So being a team player and learning how to work in teams is extremely important. And then I'd say the last thing is you need to focus on continuous learning. Your learning does not stop when you leave school. We learn every day, I learn every day, those on this panel learn every day, and it's important that you have a focus for continuous learning. Fantastic. Just go for it. And also check out women.nasa.gov to look at other brilliant uh, brilliant scientists and engineers that just happen, to, just happen to be women. Next question. Hi, my name is Kevin. And what was your first experience working for NASA? What was my first experience? Let's see. I was working as a research scientist at NASA Langley Research Center. Uh, I was building and, and creating fiber optic sensors to measure strain temperature and hydrogen on aerospace vehicles like the space shuttle. And I had never imagined working for NASA. I'd never imagined even being an astronaut until a friend of mine told me, hey, you'd be a great astronaut. And I'm like, me? What are you talking about? He handed me an application. I didn't fill it out. And that same year, our friend, Dr. Charlie Camarda, got into the astronaut corps. And I said to myself, well, wait a minute. If they let people like that in, maybe, <laughs> maybe I could get in, too. <laughs> So I applied to the astronaut corps after that, and it was one of the most incredible things. The outreach, the missions, the training, the teamwork that Marilyn talked about, it all comes together, not just U.S. teamwork, but international teamwork, people working together as one team to advance civilization. That's what we do as a, as a NASA, Lockheed Martin, our, our contract teams, to change the world. And so that was my first experience, and then my last experience flying in space, and now helping you guys reach your dreams through education. All right, next question. Hi, my name is Brandy, and my question is, what is your most interesting part of your job? Okay, you wanna answer that? Sure. The most interesting part of my job is finding new resources to excite my students and get them motivated about learning. Um, through STEM, science, technology, engineering, and math. And working with NASA and all the opportunities that they've provided us is very exhilarating for educators and students. Thanks. Next uh, question. Hello, um, I'm Jordan Groom. This is for Charlie Bolden. Uh, what is the long-term goal of NASA's deep space exploration? I think you've heard all of us talk about going to Mars and asteroids and NASA's long-term goal, our ultimate destination for human beings, and it helps that the president told us to do it, uh, is Mars. And the Orion spacecraft back here, everything that we do today is geared toward trying to get humans to Mars in the 2030 timeframe. So that's the ultimate. Okay. 
Thank you. And I think our time is up. And we really appreciate all the participation from the students. Go to nasa.gov slash education slash EDC for Exploration Design Challenge. This has been a fantastic community helping change the minds and hearts of our next generation of explorers. Godspeed. NASA is currently developing a new heavy lift rocket to carry a human-rated spacecraft called Orion Multipurpose Crew Vehicle. Orion will support deep space missions to asteroids, the moon, and Mars. We are building an exciting future of discovery, science, and exploration that will challenge our world through lessons we are learning today. The International Space Station is helping prepare for these steps further into space. Hi, my name is Sunny Williams. I'm a flight engineer on the International Space Station. Outside the protection of Earth's atmosphere is a universe full of radiation. It's everywhere. Space radiation, sometimes called cosmic radiation, is different from the types of radiation you find on Earth. It has very different effect on human DNA, cells, and tissues, and it's very difficult to predict the long-term effects of space radiation on the human body. Because of this uncertainty, we are running experiments to learn more about radiation. Some of the radiation detectors are small, others are a little bit bigger. Outside of the space station, we also have Materials International Space Station Experiment 8, called MISI 8, and it's also gathering data to help us understand radiation protection required for interplanetary flight. We are charting a pathway for your generation's journey further into space and we need your help. So get involved with NASA's newest design challenge, the Exploration Design Challenge. This challenge is charting your journey to Mars by tracking one of the major challenges to deep space long duration exploration, namely the dangers associated with radiation and the need to protect our astronauts as they venture into places never visited by humans before. Register now for the Exploration Design Challenge you and your team may be the student engineers who help NASA develop the technology needed to protect astronauts from space radiation as they travel to the moon, asteroids, and Mars aboard the Orion. Chart your pathway to Mars.